morning ladies and gentlemen it is the morning of august 3rd 2017 and it is my final full day here in hilton head island so i get the opportunity just like tuesday to explore uh, my heart's content uh, you know go around and see um, see all the different sites once again here around sea pines um, I'm, I'm gonna actually maybe attempt attempt a bike ride at a different time because I've always been going in the morning when there has been nothing at all but you know going at different times tends to yield you know kind of like a different feel to it you see more people out there on the road more opportunities you know kind of like say hi and maybe uh, you know get acquainted with somebody else who may be from New Jersey or whatever or whatnot um, but uh, the only the only things I haven't really seen is the Lawton Stables and the Forest Preserve, which are both of which, which are right there. I don't think I'll have enough time or energy to go out of the Sea Pines area to like Palmetto or something like that. I think I'm just gonna contain every one of my exploration right here. Now, it is hot and humid. Well, it's actually not hot, it's humid right now. We had a lot of rain last night. There were some, rum some rumbles of thunder. And that's supposedly, and supposedly is gonna be the same case today. The atmosphere is a little bit unstable, but according to the future cast that I saw, I don't know how much, I don't know if you can trust that very much, uh, especially down here, down south. Um, but it's not really supposed to rain until the late afternoon into early evening. And so um, I got my bike here ready and you never know when there's going to be a pop-up shower, whether it's going to be a, a brief shower or a brief downpour. But generally, the air is maybe stable enough that it's not a complete washout until, uh, until after dark. So I'm going to do all I can because tomorrow I'm heading back up north. Uh, so I don't have Friday morning to explore, so this is the only reason why... I want to get as much done as I can today and bring you, continue to bring more phenomenal and fantastic images from Hilton Head Island on this Trips and Treks edition. so myself okay guys so I just want to say just a, little, a brief word about last night um, or about the last episode I know I said I was gonna go to Coligny at night but uh, we got back from Charleston rather late and by the time we had arrived there had been clouds moving in, in the area and we saw a drizzle um, and then it started um, on and off rain showers and kind of decided no we're gonna save we're gonna try to save Caligny for uh, today um, so that's why you didn't see it that's why I ended the video after uh, after the Angel Oak uh, just because of that but uh, sometimes you can't really control what mother nature does as so she is certainly unpredictable in this part of the region but as you can see behind me here in Harbor Town it has just been a wonderful morning it is a hot morning, it is a very balmy morning, but uh, nevertheless, uh, I'm going to try to get as much done today as I can. Okay, so one of the last one of the last bike rides we'll ever do is to visit this area. This is uh, the Forest Preserve. we got some fishing spots. It also includes the Indian Shell Ring. This path right here means we got to have to share the bike trail and the roadway with cars. Right here, I'm gonna bike and go straight ahead along this path, and then visit the Lawton Stables. I may not, I'm not gonna go horseback riding, but I could take pictures of the, um, the surrounding area, including some of the horses there. Um, go back this way, 
and make my way into the forest preserve and uh, take some more pictures and footage there. So it's a pretty simple bike ride today. And... Now let me give you some information about one of the more common sightings in the when you come here down to the south and that's Spanish moss on trees. Now for those who are living in the south or have been in southern states or in places like Mexico, South America, Central America, you see these formations on the trees. In fact, I'm gonna point, we're gonna pass under one right now. Well, anyway, here's a couple of things interesting about Spanish moss. Spanish moss is actually not from Spain. They are actually, they actually were, are found in Hispanic speaking countries, Spanish speaking countries like Mexico, any country in South America. In fact, there was a, for a while the, Span the Spaniards and, or Spanish people and French people debated how they were gonna name Spanish moss we pass under another set of them. The French eventually won out on the naming of Spanish moss. You know, and the Spaniards like to call them Spanish beard because it kind of looks like a beard, but eventually that name morphed into what we call today as is Spanish moss. And contrary to what some of you may believe, it may grow on trees, but it's not a parasite. It doesn't feed on the roots, doesn't get its nutrients from the tree. In fact, it gets its nutrients from being in tropical climates, from moisture in the air, the sunlight, a combination of that, as well as debris, waterborne or airborne debris also makes it thrive in this kind of environment. So that was just a little bit of what I looked up online in the morning about Spanish moss. Uh, hopefully you found that information very helpful as we are now slowly approaching the Lawton Stables and Heritage Farm. There's a group, there's a group of people doing some horseback riding up ahead, but this is the stables. I see a lot of people parking in the distance ahead keep going down here and we make a left on the bike path we're gonna see more horses down that way but uh, I wish I could go ho ha go horseback riding I wish I had the time to do that but uh, you know I got a lot to explore the very least I can do is just film a stable and film the horses it's I don't know how long it's probably been at least 14 or 15 years since the last time I rode horseback maybe I, I don't know I can't think of a last memory I had was it had to go back to 2001 or 2002 let's keep going here across the street is heritage farms and you see a lot of plants over there horse coming towards this way Wow. This is the back area. We have more of the stables right here. There's a group of horses over there. Let's try to zoom in on that. There in the distance. Oh, this one's fascinated at me filming. <laughs> and there's one more down here. Down there, I should say. <laughs> I 
Horses are neat, they're very wonderful. Great to have these kinds of creatures here. And to think that back then, these were quite in indispensable creatures, animals, you know, who... You hear of stories like Paul Revere, the Wild West. They all rode on horseback because they would travel very fast. So this is the forest preserve. The, the bike path now becomes dirt. A lot of tall trees. I'm gonna see what's up ahead. I've never seen this part of the island before. I wasn't here in 2014, neither in in 2010. We got construction vehicles everywhere. Hurricane Matthew wrecked havoc here. There's been a lot of trees that have been cleared since, and still there's a recovery effort going on. Okay, so there's uh, something over here. Let's, let me go check it out. I see there's trails. There's a Lake Joe trail. Fish Island trail. Okay, so these are different trails I think one can go around. This is a probably a fishing area. Boy, isn't life much more convenient when you got a map at your disposal? Okay, so, all right, so this is where we are right here. We are on the Fish Island Trail, and the ones with the dashes are a walking trail. These uh, solid lines are all a bike path. So if we go down this way, we go around Lake Joe. I, I'm curious to see what Indian Shell Ring is all about. Um, uh, yeah, I should have brought some bug spray with me if I knew that, <laughs> if I knew I was, what I was going to get into. Alright, I'll manage. So, let me continue here on foot and see where all of this leads to. I'll, uh, find my way around here. I don't know if I would be able to explore the whole, uh, if I could, exp if I would be able to explore the entire forest preserve, but if I can just get some good pictures, that's perfectly fine by me. Okay guys, so following this path will take you to the Indian Shell Ring. Enjoy the sounds of nature, folks. I'm gonna go silent.
Oh no, what happened here? Oh man, I guess the hurricane had to do with this as well. Okay, so the shell ring was quite a disappointment. So now I've gone over to the other side and now I'm going towards the vanishing swamp. And this trail will also lead us to the Greenwood entrance. Once again, I'm going to cut off all talking and I'm going to let you enjoy the, the sounds of nature here on the forest preserve of sea pines. I thought I'm hearing some rain. I hope it doesn't rain, I'm outdoors. According to information about the vanishing swamp, you look at the stains at the bases of the trees, you look at the stains to see where the water used to be. Left. I'm seeing the sign up ahead of me. Going to the left takes you to the rice field boardwalk, and going to the right takes you to the birdie trail. I'm guessing we will be seeing some rice fields obviously when we go this way. 
I'm very familiar with rice fields, by the way, because they're very. There's a lot of them in the Philippines, and I've been able to drive some rice fields um, during my trips there. So I'm going over this way to the rice fields right now. I'll see you when I get there. I'll snap some photos for you guys. Old rice field. There's a sign there. See, this is what I was talking about with the sh the swamp. So the the vanishing swamp would probably look like this in the winter time or something like something along the lines of that when the water gets a little higher only this time this kind of swamp doesn't vanish well it isn't exactly rice fields anymore wouldn't you say but uh, I could just imagine what it would have looked like in the heyday it's exactly I would as I would describe it in the the Philippines nothing but flat land it would be water for people who would work in these fields to harvest the grains. Let's take a look at what this is. This is the Bogey Gut Marsh. Seen from this boardwalk, Bogey Gut looks like an everglade of rustling cattails and tall grass. Yet there is more to the gut, a British word meaning long, narrow, flooded area that meets the eye. Behind this sign, a few hundred Feet northeast, the wetland is a winding swamp with shallow pools outlined with wildflowers shaded by willow and black gum trees. Bogey Gut forms a marsh where mostly aquatic grass and herbs grow. On the opposite side of the boardwalk, the water in Bogey Gut is about 18 inches deep. It flows west and drains into Lawton Canal at the far end of this marsh. At this point, we're getting close to the Greenwood entrance, so we're on the other side. Um, where we just, we're, we're on the side where I was just with the lot and stables, like taking pictures of the horses. That's the side that we're approaching. Oh gosh, look at the beautiful flowers. A word of caution to everybody, if you are try a film, trying to film here, be, please be very careful about your camera because I wouldn't want anything bad to happen to your iPhone camera or digital camera dropping into that water and saying goodbye to the footage that you've captured for the whole entire time that you're here on this island. 